the Moxa Marine YouTube channel. In this video, I am uh, starting the rebuild of a 3.0 liter Merc Cruiser four cylinder engine. And um, in this engine, I did not use plastic gauge to check my main bearing clearances. Um, I measured the bearing clearance with a dial board gauge, and um, it's 2.3015 here. And on the other side, this is the uh, I used a micrometer to measure the outside diameter of the uh, crankshaft journal, and this was 2.2988. So you take that number minus that number that gives you clearance. So um, using that method, I got good clearances. This one is just a tad, maybe one or two ten thousandths over uh, the recommended factory clearance. But um, I believe my dial board gauge uh, accuracy is uh, within that because the the point tends to dig into these soft uh, these soft journals. So I believe that's within spec. So that's the only one that was borderline. The rest of them were fine. So I just want to document these numbers. So you, I'm gonna go down the list. You can see that number. That's 2.9, 2.2987 over there, and so on. Again, 2 2.9, 2.2987, 2.2987, 2.3015, 2.3008, 2.3001, 2.3007. I mean, 2.3015. So this crankshaft is now in, and it spins very freely. And uh, I'm now about to install the piston. So I installed the first piston in this Merc Cruiser 3.0 liter four cylinder engine, and I'm now about to use plastic gauge to check the bearing clearance on this first bearing. So you can see how I've taken a piece of plastic gauge and laid it across the the uh, bearing journal, and then I'm gonna put the uh, bearing cap on it and see if it uh, see what the clearance is. Get the dirt off here. Things just lint, but. Um, Anyway, so that's, I'm about to do, this is cylinder number four. I just started with it for no reason, but uh, so I'm gonna check the bearing clearance with plastic gauge. I used the, uh, a dial board gauge and a micrometer to check the board, the clearance on the main bearings, but on the uh, rods, I find it just a little bit easier to use plastic gauge. All right, although I've shown this in other videos, I'll show it again, uh, just for kicks. So um, I'm about to check the rings on this Mercosa 3.0 liter engine. And um, what I do is I use a, a piston that I broke one time because I was I sometimes installed my rods on my pistons uh, myself and uh, you, I'll have a video on how I do it but there's a process I do it and uh, as you see I cracked this piston there's a crack running right there to the just to the left of that letter F right there you see it right through there so this piston is destroyed so I use it as a tool to push rings down in so I've got a ring in the cylinder and I'm pushing it down and by the way, this bore is 4.030, it's a 30 over bore, so these rings are 30 over. So I'm, this is the second groove ring, and I'm pushing it down to be level inside the bore. And I'll just rock this piston back and forth till my, my finger, my forefinger and my thumb touch the top of the bore. Just like that. So now that's leveled out. And you can see I've got the gap right there. And take a feeler gauge and run it right through there. And you can see that. So it's hard to see in there dark, but you can see the field gauge is right in there. So I got the field gauge, it fits right in the gap. This, uh, I've got the field gauge set for 0 0.016 because you, you typically, typically want to set them for, if you, don't, if you don't have any other guidance, you want to use 0 0.004 times the diameter of the bore. The diameter of the bore is 4.030 times 0 0.004, and it comes out to 0 0.016 each gap. So the second ring groove is okay, and now I'm about to check the first one. All right, I'm now checking the first ring, ring first ring groove gap, and I've now used the uh, the piston tool I just showed you to push the number one or the top ring groove, the top ring down inside the cylinder. And uh, I'm about to use this feeler gauge again, set on point zero, actually it's point zero one seven. So let me go ahead and put this in here. The range was the, the range in the factory manual is point zero one zero to point zero two zero. But again, I, I like to use the 0 .004 times the bore. That's that's the general rule everybody uses. That's for a normally aspirated, normally aspirated engine. So uh, I'll I'll find a chart. I have a chart somewhere, and I'll post it in the uh, link to that chart in the in this con the description of this video, where it g gives you different ring gaps or different types of engines, whether it be nitrous, turbocharged, um, high performance, what have you. So, uh, but this I think the point zero zero four numbers is uh, for a stock uh, a stock engine. Let's check this gap. So yeah, it goes through there very easily. So that one's good. 
So um, at this time, I'm gonna take the rings out and install them on the pistons. Um, and by the way, your rings will have a, if some rings have a dot or some kind of marking on them, and that mark always goes to the top, it's the top of the ring. This particular ring doesn't have a mark on it, so it, it can go on either way. And if you're in doubt, you can look at the ring profile and you can tell a, a, a ring that doesn't have a dot or any kind of marking, if you look at the profile, it'll be symmetrical top and bottom. It won't have any difference. But if it has a mark on the top, generally the ring is not symmetrical. From the, When you look at the side of it, the uh, profile of the ring, it won't be symmetrical. It'll have, a, it'll have a feature on the bottom different from the big feature on the top. So again, uh, if there's a mark, you want to make the mark to the top. Um, so I'm about to put these rings on the piston. I just cleaned the piston and uh, it really it takes three hands to put rings on the piston, so naturally I can't be videoing that. Um, it's very, uh, it's it's more of an art than it is a, a science uh, to put rings on a piston, uh, especially these rings. These rings are, are, are wide, so they're harder to manipulate. Um, I put rings on an LS motor the other day, and they were much easier because they're much thinner. But uh, these rings take a, a good bit of effort and uh, finesse and, and a good ring expansion tool. Um, I really can't uh, describe it any other way than just say you got to struggle with it and get them on. But uh, it, it takes a lot of... Uh, a lot of a lot of trial and error to get these rings on this piston. All right, I've got a piston ready to install. This piston, I've, I've oiled the uh, wrist pin it through these holes right there and right there on both sides. I put drops of oil, about four or five drops of oil, in the gaps of these rings and rotate them around to get the uh, ring groove oil, uh, get oil into the ring groove, and then uh, also on the uh, oil control ring here, I put oil in there. So I spin the oil, the rings around to, to recirculate the oil around there. Um, I've also smeared uh, some oil on the on the top, say one or one and a half inches of the uh, or of the uh, bore. Uh, I don't like to dip my pit. A lot of people just take the whole piston, dip it down in oil and a bucket of oil, and then put it in. It makes a huge mess. I just don't like having the mess to deal with. Um, so you can see I've got the 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 new main bearing shell in already in the rod, and I've got these rubber uh, these rubber uh, guards on the bolts. The guards are to keep the uh, bolts from hitting the crankshaft and nicking it. And you see I've cut a little bit of a notch on the uh, on these rubber guards and it helps to keep from pinching the rubber between the crankshaft and the bearing when it gets in there. Got a little bit of a piece of dirt there, I'll get, get off that bearing. For some reason the camera and the lights really magnify dirt on all these parts. It makes it a lot easier to see. Uh, when I say dirt, I mean like, look, it could be a grain of sand. I don't know what it is. It looks like a, I'm not sure what that is. Could it be a piece of my skin? Who knows? But I'm gonna get that off where I put it in there. So. I'm about to place this piston in and then put a ring compressor on it and push it in. All right, so what I've done is I've placed the piston in the bore. And by the way, your, the dots on the, the notch or the dots on the pistons always go towards the front of the motor. The front of the motor is that way. And you can see I've already got that one going that way. So this is piston number three. Um, so you want to have your dot facing forward. I've got the piston pushed up. I've, I've tightened this ring compressor just enough. You see it's not all the way tight. There's a little bit of a gap in there just enough to create some friction and then I reach in, reach down below and I push the piston up into the ring compressor about a half an inch and it's tight enough to where the friction won't let the piston, if, it, if the piston falls back down you don't have your ring compressor tight enough. So the ring compressor is just tight enough to create friction. I push the piston up about a half an inch and then I go ahead and compress and, and while I'm holding the entire ring compressor down with my palm I tighten it up all the way or as tight as I can practically get it. Uh, you don't want to put a tool on it, you just want to hand tighten it and to where you feel like you can't go another notch. Uh, if it takes a lot of effort to go to another notch, you don't need to do that. So I, keep, I basically tighten it up, it clicks, there's some little notches on here, and they click as you tighten it up. And then when you get to the last notch, if it takes a lot of effort to go to the next notch, you don't need to do that. And the whole time I'm holding it down, so, so I'm trying to hold the ring compressor flush with the top of the block. So it doesn't, so none of the, none of the ring compressor tries to ride up off the block. Um, you have to be careful. Sometimes your ring compressor can work its way down in the bore between the piston and the, the wall, of the, uh, the piston and the, the bore right in there. You don't want that to happen. If you feel like it has, if you see your ring compressor dropping a little bit and it tries to go down the bore, you want to do it, start over and take it back out. Um, that generally happens on ring compressors that are worn out. There's a little ridge, there's a little notch, so you can see it right in there. These little notches are supposed to help the ring compressor not drop down in the bore. And uh, sometimes they get flat or wear out and the ring compressor will actually slip down the bore. So you don't want to do that. So I'm about to tighten it up all the way and I'm going to take the, uh, this is the handle to my uh, engine stand. It's got a plastic uh, plastic handle on this steel rod. I just take the end of this plastic and tap the piston down in there. 
All right, like I said, I just took this, uh, this, this and tapped on it lightly, tapped it down through the ring compressor, and it's now completely inside. You'll know it's completely in because the ring compressor will just pop free. There will be nothing left holding the uh, the piston drops out of the way, and there will be nothing left holding the ring compressor. So the ring compressor will kind of snap closed, and it'll fall. If you don't have your hand on it, it'll fall away. It'll, it'll, the spring will make it bounce, and it'll fall off your engine. You don't want to do that because you want it'll get dirty if you do that. Um, so at this time, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna just take my hands like this on both sides, use both thumbs, and push the piston all the way down. Since I got those rubber guides, that will guide it. You kind of have to watch it too, but those guides generally will guide that uh, rod right onto the piston. And what I do is I keep pushing. Don't, don't push too hard because you don't want to slam the bearing into the crank, but I push hard enough to where I can feel it engage with the crank, and then I push it until I feel it hit solid on the crank. Then I flip the engine back over. I push the rod back down a little bit, squirt a bunch of oil between the bearing and the, and the crankshaft, and then pull it back up and, and put the cap on. All right, I pushed the piston down in the bore as far as I could, and uh, I think it's hitting the crank, but I'm not sure. But I don't want to, I'm starting to push a little too hard, so I don't want to go in and slam it into the crank. So what I'm doing now is flip the engine back upside down and then uh, see what uh, how it engage with the crankshaft. And uh, I can remove those the rubber guides and then pull the, I can use my fingers to pull the rod on up and uh, to uh, meet with the crank. All right, um, this rod had met it was all the way down. It had touched the crank. I did, it just didn't hit it very hard or solid, so I couldn't tell. Um, but I was having to struggle a little bit to get the uh, the uh, rubber guide off. This I don't know if it was this one or not. Um, yeah, it was this one. So it wouldn't come. It was kind of wedged in between the bolt and the crankshaft. So what it is, I just pushed the, the rod back down a little bit to where I could get it uh, free, and then I pulled this off. Very easy. So now I've got the uh, the two guides off, and then once I push it down, I'm I'm, uh, I'm about to push to you know, push the rod down. So I got a gap right there. Now I can squirt oil, and oil will follow down go down through that gap and oil this rod. I'm gonna say dirt just shows up so easy on this stuff. So like I say, I'm gonna pull this aside like that, create that gap right there where my thumbnails at. Let the oil run down in there, about four, five, six drops, doesn't matter and then uh, pull this rod up to meet the crank with my bare hands and put the cap on. Um, I, put, uh, I put oil drops here before I put the cap on and then uh, torque the cap down. By the way, the, uh, the torque for the bolts, the rod bolts on this engine is uh, 45 foot pounds. Um, but um, I'm gonna replace the bearings. So far, I've, I've checked one bearing with plastic gauge and it came out to somewhere between 0 0.025 and 0 0.030, excuse me, 0 0.025, no, excuse me, 0 0.0025 and 0 0.003, um, which is a little wide. So I'm gonna go ahead and order uh, bearings that are 1,000 inch undersized to, or, or you might say oversized, but they, they call them undersized, to uh, take up that slack and uh, get, the, get the bearing tolerance as much tighter. Um, but I'm going, I can go ahead and since I'm, I can do the work, I can go ahead and get the pistons installed and then swap the bearings out later when they come. They'll probably be here by, in two days. So, um, but I can go ahead and do the work. To, since I have the time now, I'm going to go ahead and get these pistons installed and then I'll swap the bearings out later. But um, at this time, I'm going to pull the, uh, put oil on it, pull the, pull the rod up, put oil on it again, put on the journal and then put the cap on and seal this one up and then move on to the next cylinder, the last one tonight. So, so by the way, a lot of people use an oil can, the little trigger gun oil can, but I can't stand them. They're very, uh, they squirt when you don't want to and squirt too much, uh, they, they squirt enough when you want to and squirt too much when you do. So I like to use the syringe. I use this syringe and it, it administers one drop at a time. You can so try to administer a drop right there. But that makes it a lot easier to regulate the amount of oil you put on bearings and stuff. Um, I typically put four or five, six drops on there, but the oil guns are, are you, you like squirting all over the place and they're very messy and uh, so I just prefer the syringe. Um, I don't know where you get one. I get them from where I work but um, or my day job during this where I get those from. All right let me go ahead and finish this up and then uh, we'll do the last piston. As you can see in the video I'm much further along than where I last left off. Um, I've got the uh, all the pistons in, the bearings in, and the oil pan on. 
and uh, I've got a brand new head gasket. This is a male head gasket, and uh, about to uh, I was about to put the cylinder head on, but I found that the cylinder head had collected a little bit of dirt and grime or whatever you call it, shot dust. So I've got to, I'm gonna wait and clean it off tomorrow and put the cylinder head on tomorrow. But to uh, wrap up this video, um, throughout this video I said I was gonna replace the bearings later. Well, I'm gonna refer you to another video where uh, lesson learned uh, that I've uh, where I've made a mistake in building this engine. And uh, I'll refer you to that video for what I did. But throughout this video, I was dropping hints where I was uh, noticing little odd things wrong. And uh, I should have stopped and paid more attention to that, but I didn't. Um, so, uh, uh, for example, when I was pushing the rod down inside the engine, it's supposed to kind of, I won't say slam into the crank, but it makes a, uh, when it goes down there, it makes a pretty good metallic, you know metallic thud when it finally does meet with the crank not hard but just it's it's a noticeable sound and uh, i couldn't get these rods they kind of I would push down and they i could get them close but they would never really hit the crank and it didn't make that the, my uh the familiar sound i was used to and there's a reason for that and uh so again i'm gonna refer you to the next video um in this uh build series and it's called uh i'm not sure what the title is but it's lesson learned so um thanks for watching and uh Please subscribe if you get a chance.